What's going on family? Robert here. So a couple years ago in Southern California, there was a significant drought. There had been multiple years of underestimated or, or under-received rain totals and the reservoirs were drying up, lakes that were bustling, just lowered down to bare minimum levels and things looked very bleak. Even some of the newscasters says that it would be 40 years before some of the rain that we needed would be replenished or it would be able to be put back to the levels that these lakes and streams were. But God sent rain. He sent rain in one year, one of the wettest years of the year. And all those things filled up in simply one year. And I believe that seeing that happen in real life mimics what Job's friend Elipaz says about God in Job chapter 5, verse 10. He says these words. He gives rain to the earth and sends water to the fields. Again, he gives rain to the earth and sends water to the fields. Here in this text, Elipaz the Tenemite is replying to Job. And if you know anything about the book of Job, Job has went through a difficult situation. He's lost all of his material possessions. He's lost all of his children. And he is in the midst of deep down despair. His friends came to come visit him. And for the first seven days, they did what was right. They just sat there with Job. Job then at some point in time spoke up. And then Elipaz began to respond back to Job. Unfortunately, he should have done what he did for the first seven days and not talk because he spoke some things that were untruths and not right. But even in the midst of some of his things that were inaccurate, were false, and just were unkind, he said some excellent truths about the Lord. And the truth that we see here is that the Lord gives rain to the earth and sends water to the field. So to understand this, we really got to understand the significance of rain back in the ancient world. Back in the ancient world, no rain, no crops. No crops, no food. No food, people starve. It was that simple. We, we didn't have aqueducts that we could get water from the Colorado River or, or desalinate water. Back at that time, if there was no rain, it was no food, and people would die. But God, God is the provider of rain. He sends the rain down on the earth. God gives rain. God is our abundant provider. Let me say that one more time because I think that is important for us to remember. That God is our abundant provider. Elipaz recognized this about the Lord. And we too need to recognize that God is the one who provides for all our needs. It may not be rain that we need. Maybe we need an extra check in the mail. God can provide that if that's what we truly need. Maybe we need some extra food in the refrigerator. God can provide that. Maybe we just need to have our kids calm down and not act crazy for a couple of hours so we can get our mind right. God can do that too. He is our abundant provider. So the question is, where do you need to ask God to provide for you? Not necessarily your greeds, but your needs. Because brothers and sisters, God, he gives rain to the earth and he fills the streams and fields with water. If he can do that, he can definitely provide for you and me. So with that, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the example and the reminder of rain. That as rain comes down and provides food to the crops, which crops provide plants and the plants provide fruit and provide fruit and nourishment for us to eat, that you provide for us. Allow us not to lose sight of that, to not to think it's our jobs, not to think it's our, our spouses or, or anything else, but to recognize that it's you. And when we feel a need, let's not complain, let's not grumble, but let's bring it to you. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
So thank you for studying with me. Continue. Let's come back as we continue to walk through Job chapter 5, these words from Ellie Pass. God bless.